As support staff, there are numerous times throughout the day when you are required to document information. Have you ever wondered why documentation is so important? First, documentation provides a record of the quality of support that you provide. There are some things that happen that won't get documented, but when it comes to the services you provide, the documentation is your way of showing what has been occurring. Legally, if it isn't documented, it didn't happen. Another important reason for documentation is communication between staff. Sometimes they rarely see each other or forget to tell someone about an important event. If it is documented, all staff that needs the information will have access to it. Documentation also shows change. It gives us a picture of the progress or regression a person is making. You may not notice change on a day-to-day -day basis, but looking back over a record that covers several weeks or months, you will be able to identify any changes that occurred. Medical conditions, response to medications and behavior concerns, all need to be documented to track progress and plan future care. Lastly, the law in many situations requires written documentation. The regulations under which you work may require specific information to be recorded on a regular basis. It may be as simple as signing a medication log or documenting financial information. Some documentation, like individualized service plans, will require a large amount of detail. You need to be aware of the documentation that is required where you work. If you are not sure, ask your supervisor. There are four categories of information that should be recorded. First, document any routine services. This would cover a wide variety of events that occur in the lives of people you support, such as medication administration, activities, contact with family or friends, and data from support plans. The second area that should be documented is any change of condition or status. Hello, Chuck. Chuck. Chuck, are you okay? This would include changes in behavior, appearance, medication, oh, or health. What's wrong, Chuck? Do you not feel good? No! I got a headache. You do? Why don't you lay down and I'll get you something. Do you want some Tylenol? Tylenol, please! If what you are observing is unusual or new for the person, it should be documented Chuck, and reported. I'll get you some Tylenol, okay? Can you sit up to take it? Is it real bad? The next category is follow-up information. When a person tells you they have a headache and you give them medication, you need to check with them later to see if the medication helped. Okay, great. Why don't you go get your snack and I'll go mark it down, okay? Then you need to record what they told you. This provides a record of the result and effectiveness of the support you provided. Lastly, you need to document professional services that are provided. In this case, you may not be responsible for actually doing the documentation, but you are responsible for ensuring that the professional provides you with the necessary documentation to place in the person's record. There are generally two ways you might document, paper-based, or electronic. First, let's discuss paper-based documentation. Documentation should be written in ink. This ensures that changes cannot be made to the information you record. Documenting in ink also makes it easier to read if you have to print copies of the record. If you make an error, do not erase or use correction fluid. Draw a single line through the error, date, and initial your correction. An important part of documentation is clarity. The record is only usable if other people can read it. Write legibly and use good grammar. Open spaces should not be left in a record. They allow for information to be added at a later date, therefore potentially compromising the record. If you finish your entry and there is still space to write, draw a line to the end of the open space. The use of electronic health records is increasingly being used within healthcare organizations to improve the safety and quality of services for the people they support. When documenting electronically, do not sign in as someone else. Each person should have their own unique login. 
Access to someone's electronic file should be limited to only staff that need access to it. Electronic documentation carries the same importance as the paper documentation that you do. It must be done accurately, timely, and professionally. It is important that you ensure you have the correct record before you start to document. Documentation should indicate the exact date and time of the recording of the event and the name of the person documenting. This might be filled in automatically, depending on the software you are using. Ideally, records should never be altered. If they can be altered, you should be able to track the changes. You should never delete an electronic record. Lastly, there are times when you may need to copy and paste documentation. If you are copying and pasting, read that information word for word, line for line, and re-evaluate it. You may inadvertently be copying information that is not accurate. Documentation is a picture of the services you provide. When done correctly, it helps you to better support people in attaining the goals they have for their life.